All right, greetings, everyone. It is I, Umber Rays. You cannot see me because my stupid camera is broken this week. But hey, never fear, because I am here to help you out. All right, so hey, everyone, we are here on the JP side. We're going to talk a little bit about the update today. We're going to talk a little bit and show you just a few interesting things to do with um, some story details. Nothing that's going to be too spoilery in terms of the plot, but some things that people might find interesting. So let's start off with the vision card. So vision card wise, there is a brand new vision card on JP. And uh, this vision card, quite hefty in terms of what it could mean for mage base teams. So yes, this is a card that benefits, hold on, the following classes and primarily mages are the major focus of this. So book users, once again, uh, glove users uh, such as Zoma or Garvel. And last but not least, canes are the big benefiters from this, but also you get some benefits for some maybe potential tank base characters such as June, for example, or Rain. Uh, wait, hold on, is June in here? Right that. All right. Let's let's pretend rain. Let's just say I just said rain. But anyway, sixty percent magic boost, critical avoidance. Um, a we uh, wait. Yes, uh, a we attack resistance. Da, da, da. Yes, a we attack resistance. That was right. But I wanted to make sure just in case, because uh, sometimes the kanji gets away from me. But uh, speed also as a beneficial effect for the unit equipping this card. It's another nice job card, but 60% magic is definitely the headliner here. And why would it not be? Yeah, it just looks like a really sweet little vision card uh, for job based ones. And it's nice to see that job based vision cards are getting a little bit of a boost over their elemental ones to make them more appealing since there aren't that many job BCs yet. However, book and fist uh, of either physical or magical, seem to be the primary focus of buffs a lot of the time, which are making some interesting teams possible. But yes, uh, all of that is really interesting. But what about on the JP side? Well, uh, there is a new event. We'll start talking about, a little bit about this. This is the Protect the Gate one. <clears throat> Basically, enemies spawn for X number of turns, the faster the speed you are, obviously the better you can handle the enemies, but also <clears throat> the more enemies you might potentially have to fight, as once you kill a certain X amount, more enemies will spawn in and it is endless until the timer is up. Honestly, uh, this one was not difficult. It was even capable done on auto, but this one might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'll try that out a little bit later and report back, maybe even do a video on it, showing it off. Now, with that being said, let's jump into the next thing, which is talking about Global this week. And Global has two new vision cards, but honestly, the Chunak one should be open and shut, whether or not people want that one, as it's effectively a water-based vision card. And the benefits are just kind of right there, and I think are pretty easy to see whether you're interested in doing water luck or not. What's more interesting is this, the Halloween Vision card, which will be a much more time-limited card on Global. I think it even is still a time-limited card. Which, you know what, uh, if it is, fine. If it isn't, even better for globalers, but I think this vision card is really nice. 7 defense, 272 HP, uh, 153. As you can see, I even have mine maxed out with a chaining ability on it with multiple uses. It's just like the Exorcist VC, but for magic and with magic human killer is a pretty amazing card even to get for arena. So this vision card limited on JP feels really amazing. Still recommend it, uh, especially for those of you who are interested in the job types that it supports, which just, you know, heading back in for a second. Oh, that's the artwork. That's very nice, too. But the actual jobs it supports, axes, uh, spears, canes, and books. So I'm sure that there is a interesting team in there that you could definitively make. What that team looks like, I'll leave up to you, dear viewer. I will be testing mine throughout the week and seeing whether or not I can make a really good team off of it. But 
There were also some job updates this week, and job updates are looking kind of interesting for a couple of characters in a specificity um, of this video. So early, 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 early uh, expectations of what I like for characters and what jobs have really benefited the best. But first off, I'm going to talk about Miranda. And as you can see, my Miranda is unfortunately stuck in level 99. And she might be there for a little bit longer, but she is looking very amazing to potentially just fully build. All right, so Miranda here is basically our red mage catalyst for looking at uh, just how much of an upgrade she got. And let me just bring up the numbers because I had to pull away for a second just to get something else ready. But Miranda Basically, I mean, you look at all the upgrades you've gotten, which increases her slash and magic resistance and debuff to that. He's been come pretty darn tanky uh, as a good little, uh, you know, water mage slash tank. And now her red mage job is looking pretty good with the increase of her magic jammer ability. Her actual job level 25 now just as spells auto revive has a 220 mod on it, is a big AoE spell, and still can cast sleep on an enemy too. So this ability is feeling really a lot stronger than it was before. As for her other ones, her other abilities, such as here, this ability decreases spirit by 40, uh, dispels auto revive as well in 144% mod. So she has a lot of way of dealing with auto revive uh, characters, which is quite nice. Now, scrolling through some of her other stuff, of course, we have Magic Jammer, which has now been upgraded multiple times to just dispel all buffs for her target. Haste, physical, and magical barriers. 100% hit chance on this thing. Cancel ability activation. Increase spirit, and also pick up your dry cleaning. You know, and a 250 mod, it's just looking pretty good. And... I do believe that the last ability to get upgraded for her is this ability, which has so many effects, I'm not really going to read it, but basically kind of just works to increasing her own speed, granting haste, and increasing single target. It's so messy on this page, I don't even remember everything that has changed on Red Mage, but I think that Miranda is a very nice winner from this, and people who have fully built her should be really excited about these upgrades, because it makes her just look way, way more solid as a tank, still dealing damage and still getting rid of some stuff off of opponents. I think Miranda is looking really good as a, like, uh, you know, just a, a alternate water tank to Celeste, especially for people who don't have Celeste, but are still looking to counter mages in a different way from Runic. But yeah, that's that. Next up, the character we're actually going to talk about as well is Ziza, which is in here. There you are. So Ziza, another character that, as you can see, I have not particularly spent a ton of resources because resources are limited and I, much like a dragon, likes to store stuff for the cold, cold upcoming winter. But seriously, uh, this character basically has 80% uh, defense penetration now which is pretty crazy if you think about it uh, from her increases uh, her main job getting buffed this time around has done a fair bit for her uh, one ability chakra we're going to talk about in a second with an actual uh, demonstration here but I mean so the other thing is monk's revive ability is now just a 50% HP regen or um, revive if you revive an ally, it comes back 50% HP, and it's just a dead set 50% chance to revive. So overall, a really big buff for this ability. Now, uh, as for the Doom and Sure Hit that Monk has, that's also looking really good. But the fact is that I want to highlight here is that Ziza might be just an absolutely insane character to run in manual pvp if you are a fan of manual pvp at all this is the character you should definitely look at for the future and potentially just uh, making sure that you have that now as for the 
X's, or sorry, MA2s. We do have a slew of MA2s. They are already available. Lorenzo, Sasha, Sakura, and Bell. Now, the two important ones, as far as I'm concerned, while we're getting set up a bunch of other stuff, Sakura does get skill activation time down by 300, which is a big, big decrease for her. Also getting magic resistance and increase of defense. Overall, Sakura looks pretty interesting for a, you know, a older character that still has some nice buffs and whatnot. And I think that Sakura got a pretty nice master ability. Uh, this is not the correct one. I want this one. Here we can show a current build of Sakura. And that as skill activation time is just a really good thing for her kit overall. Now, next up is Vern, who I don't have fully built, so just bear with me. 20% HP increase, defense penetration by 20, AoE resistance of 10, and of course the lightning attack for uh, and uh, HP for allies, which is fine. Vern seems okay. I'm not overly familiar with this character. I would like to be, but uh, overall, an oak. I think it's a pretty good upgrade. And as for Sosha, Sosha gets a 40% dexterity, 15 pierce attack, magic resistance of 60%, and spirit of 10. Pretty nice. Uh, the magic resistance kind of meme but, you know, interesting that she has a speciality more so now than she did before. And the last, last is Lorenzo, who... You know what? I'm not even going to make a Lorenzo's oil joke. Paralyzed resistance, HP by 25%. Uh, defense of 10, accuracy by 40, and grants the following effects on a single hit. Dispel, auto restore, and haste. So basically his attacks can now remove auto restore and haste, which is pretty big, very accurate, very defensive and tanky. Might even be interesting in certain applications, but yeah. Uh, overall, I think Sakura is the clear winner here. I like her upgrades the best. Uh, Vern and Sosha and Lorenzo all have some interesting stuff that could be really good. But to end this video, this is what I would like to show off. So first of all, say hello to Engelbert. Hi Engelbert, we're going to hurt you now. All right, pretty good first hit, I'll have you say. Next up, Sakura. Say hello to Sakura. Sakura is going to hurt you now. And we'll also get a nice little demonstration of these times. All right, so let's just wait here. We're just going to go over here. We'll run a nice little buff just for, you know, fun scenes. Now, I don't want to do anything just yet. So let's just take some damage. As you can see, he's hanging in there pretty well against mages, considering he's a physical tank. Now, what are we going to do? I know... We've got the sub-job of Monk. Why don't we run Chakra? All right, so this is the final upgrade that I really want to talk about, and probably one of my favorite upgrades here, is that Chakra's upgrade is just pretty good, as you can see. So they've changed it effectively to be a 40% HP restore for allies, restore TP of 32% for allies, and also grant a 10% HP regen over multiple turns for allies. As you can see, Engel ends up pretty healthy by the end of this, and also is restoring a lot of HP to our allies as well. Engel is pretty sweet. Um, his limit burst, you know, deals increased uh, damage now as his HP decreases. He has access to, you know, ignore fatal damage to keep that going or to keep him alive, and he has multiple uses of it now that also increase hate generation too. He has the physical barrier, but if you think about just the fact that he now has access to sure hit with Monk, as well as increasing his HP with Chakra, pretty damn good overall. I have to say, probably one of my more most interesting upgrades. He also has the monk increase of 150% attack increase with defense penetration of 40. So overall, um, my favorite upgrade of this entire patch has to be this. 
just the monk upgrade actually ended up being way better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Red Mage also looks juicy and fun, which is, now that I'm realizing it, kind of a weird way to put that. <laughs> but yeah, um, honestly, Devote and Sniper are fine upgrades. I haven't really dwelled too much into them, but the early winners so far looks like Red Mage and Monk. And definitely I'm thinking that Engelbert is actually looking really quite crazy here, especially if he can survive. He's just so difficult to kill now with just so much things working for him. And Sakura as well, just in the combination of these two units, getting these kind of big buffs and potentially working in interesting ways with new job BCs is definitely looking more exciting than anything else. So anyway, uh, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope to be able to afford a new webcam in the future, but hey, if anybody would like to support the channel, uh, appreciate it in any way possible. But, and such as watching this video, that's what you're doing right now. So thank you. Uh, that's all for this video. Take care and see you in the next update.